Cornell, what of all the things that you could have studied, what drew you to study studying philosophy? I've never asked you this. I've just taken it for granted that you are a great philosopher. But I've never asked you what drew you to the study of philosophy and then to making teaching into a calling, your vocation and your avocation. Mm. Because you were a, a, a polymath. You had choices. Why philosophy? Yeah, I've never been asked that question, no, brother. You know, there used to be a little bookmobile out in Glen Elder. Sacramento, where I grew up. I know Brother McNeil is here somewhere. I don't know where he is from Sacramento. But uh, I remember picking up a book, like Red Biographies of Albert Einstein and a whole host of others. But there was a book by Will Durant called The Story of, of Philosophy. Of, of philosophy yeah. 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 And they only had a few books in the bookmobile, so you had to reread the same books over <laughs> and over, which is fine. It's just fine. <laughs> it's like a jazz musician. You know, you body and soul, yeah, let's play it again. Body. <laughs> uh huh, Lewis Coleman, oh, I see that he got his version, so and so got it. <laughs> but that book hit me hard, it really did. And it was about uh, philosophy, about love of wisdom. Now, when I got to Harvard, I pulled that book out. We had W.P. Quine, John Rawls, we had Robert Nozick, who was my tutor. Uh -huh. He said, why do you want to be a philosopher? I pulled out the story of philosophy, put it on the table, <laughs> picked it up. Dang, this thing is barely holding together. How many times did you read this thing? <laughs> about four or five times. And they said, yeah, we're going to teach you real philosophy <laughs> at Harvard, analytical philosophy. Right. You know, and that's yeah. going to be Frege and company. And so I held on. But I always felt that philosophy should go to school not simply with science and mathematics and logic, but it should go to school with poetry. Uh -huh. It should go to school with history. It should go to school with storytelling with and music. narratives and music. Yeah. Poetry and music, of course, going, going hand in hand. How old were you when you read Will Durant? Lord have mercy. I'm just trying to think which Smokey Robinson song was out at. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Shop Around, no, no. I think it's Tracks of My Tears. I think it's Tracks of My Tears. I must have been about 11. Wow. About 11. Mm -hmm. And did your parents say, how are you going to provide for your family? How are you going to eat? Philosophers. There was some consideration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was. But mom, you know, she, she fundamentally believed in the black national anthem, which is lift every voice, not lift every echo. <laughs> and so she wanted me to find my voice, just like a jazz woman or a blues man. You got to find your voice. Yep. She would do everything she could to make sure I found my voice. When I found my voice, there I was reading philosophy, wanting to write, and wanting to collect the, connect the life of the mind and the world of ideas to the, uh, the struggle for freedom. Because, I mean, Martin King and Malcolm X and uh, Angela Davis and uh, Erica Huggins and others, they, they meant the world to me coming up. Mm -hmm. And so I was working in the Black Panther Party breakfast program. I was working in the prison program. And I couldn't join the party because it was so secular and atheistic and agnostic. And I, was un I understood it because oftentimes the gods that they were rejecting were gods that I was rejecting, too. Uh, but I was, I was already a, a Jesus-loving, free black man. So if I couldn't take Jesus with me, mm -hmm. then I, I could work with them, and I couldn't be in the party. And they said, 